Okay, welcome. Today I'm going to be offering the third part in the series about the strategic survival personality, which is a core understanding to really get your head around in order to understand boarding school survivors, boarding school syndrome. So, enjoy. So, last two weeks we have done the strategic survival personality of the complier or the um, conformist, the rebel, and today is the crushed. So as I said last week, the percentages are roughly, you know, if you imagine that the conformists, the compliers are probably 80%, possibly 90% of any year group at boarding school or of ex-boarders. Most of us are compliers. Then you've got probably 10, 15% which are rebels. Then you've got the crush, which is about 5%. So if you were to look at a year group, so it might be 14 people in a year, then it would be one person would be the crushed. And as Richard Beard talks about in his book, The Sad Little Men, he said, if you were in a group on your year and you couldn't see the custos, another word for the crushed, then you had to know that it was you, <laughs> yeah, because there was always someone there, you know. Um, so for me, in my experience of boarding school, yeah, we always had one person who it was. Um, and I remember that on my year, the crushed was, he more struggled with anger. And people, you know, eventually he got suspended for his anger. But I think even first couple of days, this was a thing which happened at school, you know, a ritual that we had in the centre of the dormitory. We had our clothes were all put into bags. Uh, our underwear, we had to separate them off. Our shirts, our socks, and, um, and that was it. And what the older boys did is they came and had a look at the underwear and they checked to see if anyone had pooed themselves. Then what they did is they, because they were all named the underwear, they would then pin that to the notice board either downstairs or they would um, pin it, you know, in the, the dormitory. And then the name skids, which basically, you know, you skidded yourself, you pooed your pants, became their name. And every time they saw him, they would laugh at this guy. And this used to make him angry. So I had a really short temper, but he had a shorter temper than me. So he would get goaded and he would get angry. And obviously having your um, underwear pinned on the board. And each year the same thing would happen. Um, sometimes it would be two people. Um, but generally it was one on each year. And what would often happen is that crushed person, certainly in my school, you know, they either learnt to put the defences up or they left. So there was one boy on the year below me who was severely crushed. I mean, terrible. He was a lot smaller. Um, when someone touched him, he'd go, ow! So people would touch him even more and they would kick him. Eventually he left the school, but when he left, this crushed boy, uh, he went to a new boarding school, one of the, the, the top four, Eton or Harrow, and within a term, I believe, possibly two terms, he came back because the, the, the um, bullying at this new school was horrific. And he said it was much better at, at what he knew. And he came back and he'd put this, this shell up. He was very cold. He'd become this... Yeah, um, you know, he put the defences up. So I'll read a little bit about the, uh, the casualty or the crushed. These people may have been neglected, abused or subject to double binds even before they went to school. So a double bind is that idea, I'm damned if I do, I'm damned if I don't. So, you know, uh, that you don't love me and, um, you know, even if I do this, you still won't love me. So 
Being already so damaged, they were unable to create a competent survival personality and suffered bullying and scapegoating at school from staff and children alike. Alternatively, they were abused at boarding school, often sexually, and were unable to make a cry for help, or their cry for help was glossed over or ignored. Their situation is often accompanied by drug and alcohol problems, poverty, or social isolation. Even some ex-boarders from quite privileged backgrounds can fall into this group, including the crushed are those who may have come from good enough homes, but whose attractiveness had subjected them to unwanted attentions in the sexual hothouse atmosphere during their puberty. Yeah, so you've got a few things. At my school, it was called a fruit bat. And if you look at podcast number 44 with uh, Amelia White, she says the same thing. She says the girls, the pretty ones were called fruit bats. Same with us as boys, you know, the pretty ones were called fruit bats. Uh, There was also, you know, if you had big nose or you had red hair or you had something which was different, you did something, you were, you know, they tried to crush you. And I think this is interesting. I think this is interesting video over Christmas between Meghan Markle and Jeremy Clarkson. I see that we as a society, as the British media, have tried to crush Meghan Markle, try to crush her because she's somehow different. She's American. She doesn't come from this um, upper class background. So <clears throat> she says, He goes on to say, as we know, the outward face of the strategic survival personality tends to exhibit high, if brittle, functioning. A casualty or a crush might have been able to put on a brave face just enough to avoid annihilation. You know, so this boy, when he left the school, he hadn't managed to do that. So he left. Yeah. Um, But a lot of cases, they don't learn that. You know. And that's the amazing thing at school is that amazing or terrible thing is that even fighting back, that is seen as weakness in a boarding school. You know, I learned just to be really angry, but I never fought unless I was drunk. And then I was drunk, then I'd do it privately often. I I might punch someone, but it was very rare that I did that. So, you know, Even if you have that defence of punching, that was seen as a a weakness. So people would keep goading you. But those crushed by boarding will be exhibiting some signs of distress. Even if it takes on an effort to realise that they are not just misfits. In these cases, bullying leaves its mark ineradicably. Being bullied can lead to a life dominated by much sadness and depression. Yeah. So those are just some of the the ideas about the uh, the crushed. So you know, if you have been crushed, know that you know it's a completely dysfunctional system. There's nothing wrong with you. You're an amazing, wonderful man or woman. You know, it's the system. So. To see that, that there's a worthy, wonderful being within you. So I'd say that's the first thing with the crushed. Is just to know, ah, yeah, it's not me. I'm not broken. It's the system that is broken. Yeah. So that's really, really key. First thing. Um, You know, and part of me would love to reconnect with those people who were crushed at my school. And in some ways, I probably was to blame. I remember one boy, there's another, there's a few other stories, but one was when I was 18. I was in my last year and I was popular, very good at sport and respected. And there was this one boy on the year below who was being bullied. Someone who got cubicles at that point um, and actual door studies. And one of the boys on my year who was a bit of a bully, a bit of a rebel, he stuck a, um, a a ladder through this boy's window and he was just in his study all night just bullying him I don't know why this was uh, but he was kind of biting this uh, this the, the guy from the year below 
And the next day he called his parents and says, I, I, I want to leave. And he was you know, 70 at the time. And I said to him, I'm so sorry, I, you know, I um, really apologize. And he says, well, it's not your fault. But on one level it was because I didn't stop it. But that was the thing about boarding school is that, you know, you didn't dare stop it. Because if you did, then it would turn against you. In that instance, it probably wouldn't have done. But I wasn't a confident person. Although on the surface I had this complier or conformist personality, but I had, you know, I carried some shame about that for a while. So, yeah, I realised that because of being part of the system, you know, um, yeah, it, it wasn't always pleasant. So I'll see if I've got any other notes about the crushed. Um, yeah, so I think the other thing is the crushed, uh, Nick says in Wounded Leaders, the problem with the crushed is that uh, they are unable to put sufficient resources into survival to be credible. They may not have been able to split enough. Yeah, so it's almost like I just learned to be boom, shut down. Right, just piss off, you know, leave me alone. That, you know, that I gave off that psychopath look. I mean, the young when I was 18, the younger boys used to call me SBV, silent but violent, because going to the dormitory and, you know, I'd just jump on them and punch them. So, so some of the other crushed things. And yeah, he's talking mainly about this sexual side um, that that was part of the crush. If you were very pretty and the older boys wanted some of that, then um, you would often be crushed because you're being sexually abused. You know, I think um, Richard Branson talks about that his first night in public school, age 13, he was sexually abused by an older boy. Um, so often those... Yeah, if you were attractive, then that would also, you know, crush you, and especially teachers, which happened in my school quite a bit. Um, yeah, so I think I will just leave that there. But yeah, there's just some ideas to work out where am I, and it might be as Nick says, it might be you dance through each of these. Some days, you know, I can feel a bit crushed. It's like right, how do I pick myself up? Sometimes I can go into the rebel or the complier and the conformist. Um, just to be aware, ah, oh, is this me, my true self, or is this just a uh, personality trait, survival strategic personality? Yeah, am I just, ah, oh, is it a learn from school? I know, and I talk about this in my book, which is, I still haven't found a publisher for it, but this idea of the rules, what are the rules we take on? And the rule for me might have been, you know, I don't trust anyone or I won't get close or I won't show vulnerability. And often those conformists or those rebel rules are still running our lives and our relationships. But we're not at school and they're no longer valid. We need to start letting go of these rules and these beliefs to start going, oh, I can be happy. <laughs> I can be joyful. I can laugh. I can have fun. I can, you know, be spontaneous and silly. And it's OK. Yeah. Um, so some reflections there I hope that this uh, series has been useful and um, yeah um, take care any questions let me know bye for now